My Intel 486 has the processor of the OGI Pentium processor. It may be obscured with the modern hot and flashy Ryzen and i9, but it was one of those processors that became the backbone of a modern CISC based computer architectures. But how and why did it occupy such a place in the Hall of Fame of our processors? Let us see in this video. The i486 was essentially a high performance follow up to the i386. It focused on improving the total performance of the processor rather than its clock speed. As a result, its lowest clock speed was 16MHz, just 4MHz higher than the i386, all the while achieving the Intel's goal of 2 to 3 times the performance from i386. The i486 had several new instructions introduced with notable instructions like XAD and BSWAP. The i486 had an on-chip shared 8KB cache that stored recent data. Now this would be an oddly specific thing that I am talking about. But the thing is, the i386 and previous processors didn't have an on-die cache, only a small storage line for storing instruction. Instead, it used a separate chip for cache that is embedded on the motherboard it worked on. Now without me saying anything, we can conclude this method was really slow. The i486 also had a more powerful external bus which connected with other parts of the computer. The bus had a new burst mode to access memory and transfer the data to the cache line. The 1980s was quite a phase for desktop computers, or just processes in general. For starters, the 80s era touted RISC architecture as the future of all computing with the MIPS, PARC and ARM were dominating the headlines all the time. The RISC architecture is more of a direct instruction set. An instruction set is a set of all commands that a processor can understand now. RISC architecture has a small and basic instruction set to follow the less is more ideology from minimalism and requires a complex process for the instructions to be broken into smaller basic ones before working on it. This one compared with CISC, which had a more redundant instruction set, so that it doesn't have to spend time and memory to break up instructions into smaller ones. Each have their own advantages and neither one of them is a clear cut faster than the other. CISC architecture is mostly used on desktop computers and laptops, while CISC is mostly based on a mobile oriented or low powered computers. This was mainly because these processors could not afford the luxury of a bigger processor die along with an increased temperature to incorporate a more redundant instruction set. Now as I said, people are thinking that RISC good and CISC bad. Even Intel had introduced a i860, a RISC based processor. This was followed up with a separate RISC team which was internally competing with the company's CISC team. Along with this, the increased market demands made the CISC team know that the processor had to be executed flawlessly. The team could not afford delays and bugs. Samples of i486 are scheduled to be released in Q3 of 1989. However, the team just barely bet the announced shipping date with production starting at late September to early October. Now don't get me wrong, the CISC team didn't create the i486 flawlessly. There were several bugs in the floating point unit of the 486. Chips with V4 mask revision and earlier ones were affected with this bug. However, these bugs were relatively minor. Overall, the 486 was a success in the market and secured CISC as the backbone of personal computing with its commercial success. Today, CISC based x86 instruction architecture is still used alongside the greats of RISC as well. 